How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the Clash Bash. I am Mo Bogsley, joined here with Elaine. How are you doing today, Elaine? I'm I'm doing well. Um, I'm I'm having fun doing looking at these matches with you. So I'm excited to jump into this and yeah, get started and enjoy some more Clash Flesh and Blood. It's not a format that we get to enjoy often, but it's it's a fun format, honestly, to watch and play. So I agree and. These this hero that is coming up is your favorite hero. We have Kano versus Vincent. So this will be a great time. Yes. Elaine Harentry, known Kano main. <laughs> um yeah, Kano enthusiast. I love it. I love You could even Arcane. say Kano Enjoyer. Let's switch on over. Alright, so it looks like we're gonna be watching a Kano versus Vincent game. Do you have any initial thoughts on this matchup? Um, so Kano really needs to throw two spells on his turn and try their best to strip cards out of Vincent's hand to then kill Vincent on their turn. It looks like Kano is going first. Um, you, I, well, we just joked about me being a Kano player, but you are the Kano expert <laughs> here, so. Yeah, so Kano going first, it is always a good way to leak extra damage through and you never know how much AB they're going to present. Uh, it looks here they have AB2 and Spellvoid 2. And Kano just double E-potting them. One of the best starts you can have as a Kano player. Get those energy potions out there. That's going to be a lot of resources for the kill turn later. And doesn't let Vincent cycle their hand at all. Yeah, I would um, not be... I'd be scared. I'd be scared if I was... I don't play Kano, um, but if I was sitting on the other side of a Kano with two E-Pots out turn zero and no filter, I would be feeling a little nervous. So let's see what Daniel comes back with. Ooh, as Vincent. Is that a defense reaction in the Vincent's deck? A little unfortunate that there wasn't enough cards to cut for that one. We've got the Banishment and Create a Rune Chant. Right off the bat, pitching. Is that a Deathly Delight, I believe? Yes. And... and just to throw the specter, uh, really respecting Kano. Uh, doesn't want to die right off the bat. Trying to set up an arsenal and something to do later. Um, Kano matches are always fun because in response, the Kano player is going to activate Kano, banishing a Reverberate Red. And then activating staff to give his next arcane spell plus one arcane. Yeah, it took me. I was like, is this pitch to activate Kano or for the damage that's being presented by Nathaniel on the set? <laughs> <laughs> so Kano is throwing four reverberate. If this hits, Kano can banish a card from their hand and play it at instant speed. So it is kind of like a mini Storm Striders if this hits. I mean, I think that's a good card to run in Clash because you don't have um, Storm Striders, right? Which exactly. I'm gonna get pitch for that three damage coming. Uh, so two damage got through. It looks like Nathaniel unfortunately had only reds left. Um. So and then it like looks like Kano. Paid the one for the one damage off of the Specter of Pain. So no extra rune chance are created by Nathaniel. This is always great trying to figure out whose turn it is every every turn cycle as well. So it looks like we did not see the effect off of the Kano player use the effect off Reverberate there. And that was all still on the Vincent's turn, so... <laughs> yeah, this is only turn two of the game, surprisingly. Lots of cards have been thrown so far. I mean, that's one thing about a Kano, Kano game. It's it's very interactive. So but is that a Lesson in Lava going down, it looks like? Yeah, Lesson in Lava for four. We'll let Kano tutor for any card that costs less than the damage dealt and put on top of their deck. 
So it looks like Kano can get any two cost and put it back on top of their deck. And chooses to get a snapback. Uh, it is a one for three that can be played at instant speed if you've played a wizard non-attack action card this turn. Pretty good. I was going to ask, um, and that just goes to the top of deck. Yes. Kano okay, showing us he has a blue. Looks like he just wants to pitch it and throw some more damage. Three more damage coming Nathaniel's way. We have a Mothran Sky that was pitched uh, by Nathaniel for that Lesson in Lava, which is a really good card. I think a staple card in, in most Runeblade decks. Um Green Sky is the next Greenblade Blade attack action card you play. Gets go again and on hit, you create rune champs. Usually, always more than one. Three for red, two and one. So it and is so not. Got a... the banish... I don't know what card that is. I'm not familiar with all the Vincent's cards. Uh -huh. um, that is a Vantum Banshee. It has, um, it does have Blood Debt um, and Rune Gate as well. Envelop in Darkness is played, uh, making a Rune Chant token and giving the next Rune Gate card this turn plus one. So if that Rune Gate card in Banish costs three, Vincent can play it this turn. It, it looks does. like Kano it does wants to respond. It. Yeah. Um... Because Phantom Banshee does cost three, and it comes in for seven as well. So that's a, that's a pretty big attack that the KO player would be facing. We'll see what the response is. So it looks like the response was pitch a blue, activate Kano, hit red reverberate off the top, then activate staff, and it looks like they're going to throw this reverberate again, just like last time. You know what color reverberate that? Did you see? Uh, it looks like it is a red because it is coming in for it's four. Red. The dice really help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please always place your dice on your cards for commentary. We appreciate it. Uh, looks like that hit for two. And an Aether Flare Yellow is being played. So this will be for two damage. And it will buff the next Arcane spell you play this turn by two. Um, the damage dealt by the reverberate, correct? Uh, what was that? The buff. Um, the buff on Aether Flare is the two damage that was dealt by the reverberate, right? Uh, no, that is Blazing Aether. Uh, Aether Flare will buff the next Arcane spell played by two. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, all of Kano's cards are Aether something or Blazing something. So they all kind of do blend together. Yeah, they're all Aether, and I feel like most are you know, deal deal arcane damage and maybe deal some more arcane damage. <laughs> 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 we still haven't seen the Kano player use either E-Pod. No, he is holding on to those E-Pods. Pitching another blue, trying to blind hit off the top. It looks like it is a red snapback. And Kano will break his chest, so he's taking his shirt off to get one extra resource for five damage off the snapback. Uh, Vincent will use his spell void two helmet to prevent two of the damage and go down to six. Kano's still doing things. He says, not yet, Nathaniel. I'm still playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> and breaks both of his epots to blind Kano again. Hitting a red Scalding Rain off the top for four. Oh, no, maybe a blue Scalding Rain for two. Yeah, it looks like it was for two. So Nathaniel down the four. And now Kano says, hit me. Oh, we're Goliath Gauntlet. We're going all in. I guess we, we need to at this point. This Kano just kind of popped off. Yeah, it looks we like it's three Rune Chants and nine Physical coming at Kano. 
that's pretty good when Kato's life is at 15 and just did use his whole hand to do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, no epots, no cards left. Taking 13 damage down to two. Unfortunately, no rune chance left for Nathaniel. No, yep, no rune chance left. And I think Kano's card turn is just going to be a draw up and pass. So I'm curious to see how Nathaniel, Nathaniel plays as being at four life, knowing that whatever he does, Kano can respond to. And four is a very low life total when playing against a Kano. Um, seems. A little a little scary so yeah you have to play this really smart right because you you want to hold on to your research resources to be able to prevent damage uh but still form a threatened damage obviously exactly you need to kill kano but you also can't be killed by kano and you only get so much to say about that <laughs> <laughs> only so much say <laughs> Uh, Nathaniel has activated been set, banished a Mavrin Skies, it looks like, and made a rune chant. Yeah, I, it is a red Mavrin Skies, so I'm wondering. It looks like Nathaniel's just gonna pass back. He doesn't want his shields to be down, it looks like. Yeah. Maybe didn't draw an attack? I maybe didn't draw an attack. Maybe he wants to see what Kino does. I'm. I'm... Kino is. Pitching a red Voltic Bolt to break his Mage Master Boots, giving his next non-attack action card to this turn. Go again. Oh, maybe that was a blue Voltic Bolt? Yeah, it looks like a blue Voltic Bolt. So I happy you're, you're here to talk to the Kano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a red Aether Flare for four with Go again. Uh, Vincent will block two of that, making... The next non-attack arcane damage that Kano plays, plus two damage. And that would be a Blazing Aether, which is the card you were thinking of earlier that gets buffed from all the previous damage dealt. So there's a Blazing Aether 4-4. Four, four. Nathaniel is at two with only two AB. So we really need an Oasis Respite here to stay in this game. Have one floating and a Oasis or Spite would be for free. Uh, looks like he did not have the Oasis or Spite, though, and, and that is game. <laughs> looks like Kano just ended that in three turns. Kano came to throw spells, and wow. This is why this is why Kano this is why Kano scares me. Yeah, he, I mean that was that was really impressive. Ooh. Elaine, how did you think about that game? What What are your takeaways? Well, it just gave me a little bit of PTSD to playing Kano, um, playing against Kano. Um, no, but in all honesty, uh, I think I was a little bit surprised at how how strong that Kano deck seemed in a clash format and how efficient that it that it worked. Because um, that was a three turn three turn game Kano for Kano, and I mean. It was a good as as a Kano player, how did you feel about it? I felt like it was a good um, like a good game. Yeah, so for back a clash when, deck. Back when me and you did the clash tournament, uh, I was actually right. scared to bring my baby Kano and I decided to bring Chain. Uh because I didn't think Kano was that great in Clash. But there was an excellent performance of just how good Kano can be and how Aether Flare is still a busted card, and so is Blazing Aether, and you will just die. Yeah, we had we had some discussion before um, we we started filming today, just about like Kano's equipment. We were making a lot of jokes about. <laughs> well, quick summary: Mo Boxley was complaining that Kano does does not have much block value, and his equipment is even worse in Clash. And I said that you know, uh, Kano wants to look fancy and wear nice robes and not big heavy equipment that's gonna block a lot. That's just that's just canon for wizards. So I'm I'm very sorry. But I mean, even even going back to this game, um, I felt like the Kano use their equipment, the actual effects on their equipment really efficiently. No, you're right. We we still kept the hat though, because you know, like the hat stays on. So I'm proud of the Kano Classic. for that. 
Uh, but yo, Kano got maximum value off of all of his equipment slots. Uh, I was a little surprised when I saw Nalrun gloves at the start, but Kano did pop that chest very early, so he did need the AB just in case. Um, and I, I feel like the Vincent didn't have enough time to set up their game plan. They didn't have time to banish those attacks and really take the tempo. Uh, they unfortunately only had time for one big attack, which was just a barely bit off. If that Rune Gate card was a red instead of a blue for plus three, Vincent would have got there. So, yeah. Thank you again for being here to help out with the Kano side of things. Um, it's it's definitely a learning experience, and it's Kano games are actually really enjoyable to sit through and watch when someone is there, like explaining what's going on to to kind of help out people who don't play Kano and might not know the lines as well. So, thank you. Thank you for being here, Elaine. And where can we find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter under. E. Ham on Tree. Um, I just kind of post on there a lot. I'm also one half of the Pitch Perfect podcast with Melody Likes and one third of the Rainbow Pitch League with Kiki and Melody. And all of that information and links to those sites as well are in my bios on Twitter under E. Ham on Tree. It's just Ham on Tree, like bacon on bush. It's 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 pretty simple when you think about it. Yeah. It's not as complicated as it sounds. <laughs> How about you? Where 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 can the people find you? Yeah, you can mainly find me on Twitter as well, at Mo Bogsley, um, or just on random YouTube channels here on YouTube. You'll just randomly see me pop up. So feel free to click on those and, yeah, have a good time. Yeah, if you go follow us both on Twitter, you might see us, um, me, com me complaining about Kano and Mo Bogsley complaining that uh, I don't play Kano. So... <laughs> I'm going to try my best to get her on Kano. It's slowly working, maybe in a few weeks. It, that's a fair point. It is slowly working. I'll give, it, I'll give you that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.